you a reminder we're standing by for the heavyweight title fight, Muhammad Ali against Ron Lott. For the stunning win, Young Sanford. Young Sanford. This He's owned by Red Fox. To Las Vegas audiences. Well, that's our big boo at ABC, Mr. Elton Rule, and his bride, Betty. He's president of the American Broadcasting Producing Jackie Fields. Here's Jackie Fields, a familiar figure here in Las Vegas. Past welterweight champion of the world. Hi, Jackie. I know that in the audience this evening, and I'm going to ask him to come up and say hello, he is the former heavyweight champion of the world, George Foreman. Here is the introduction of George Foreman. He is not popularly received, as you can hear. What a difficult situation for this young man. How hard to puzzle out this recent unfathomable personal eradicus. The greatness at Mexico City. The and then the demolition of Frazier and Norton consecutively, Lewis. and then the shocking upset in Zaire by Muhammad Ali. Here, of course, is one of the most popular men ever to fight, Joe Lewis. Las Vegas is his beat now. We can find him every day at Caesar's Palace or on the golf course. He looks very well indeed. Seems to be much at peace with himself. The Giffa has number 32 of yesteryear, Jimmy Brown, with him. Over to you, Thank Giff. You, Howard, and he looks like he'd go right now. Uh, Jimmy, I know you've been around the fight game. Uh, how do you look at this one? Uh, I know you've followed the heavies. Well, this is quite an event because Ron Lyle is a serious contender. And I've been watching him work out, and I know he wants to win, but... Uh, the champ is looking good. He's big, 223 or something like that. And he's happy, and uh, I think he's going to put on a show tonight. Yeah, let me ask you, a few years ago, they were talking about you uh, becoming a heavyweight. What happened to that? Well, you know, I don't really want to get my face messed up either, but, uh, you know, ABC has always been doing a lot of things, and uh, what I really want to do is challenge O.J. to a superstar. I'll contest. talk to you for you, Jimmy. Let's go quickly back to Howard now. Ali's coming in. Thank you, Giff. Thank you, Jimmy Brown, number 32. You're looking at Ron Lyle as he prepares to enter the arena. You know what he said at the very top of this program tonight. When you've spent seven and a half years in a Colorado State Penitentiary, when you've been stabbed in the abdomen, given up for dead, death certificate actually signed, brought back to life on an operating table for seven and a half hours, then put in the hole, solitary confinement. When you've been through that, well, then maybe you're not afraid of Muhammad Ali and maybe you're not psyched up. I don't think Ron Lyle is an outstanding fighter. I think he's slow, ponderous, but I know this, he can punch and he is unafraid. And I saw Kenny Norton give it to Muhammad Ali, March 31, 1973. And nobody expected it. Ali said he had a message from God, a broken jaw. It could happen again. Back in a moment. Back live at the Las Vegas Convention Center. You're looking at Ron Lyle, the challenger, now in the ring. Weighed in at 219 pounds. That's heavy for him. 30 victories, two defeats, one draw. The defeats at the hands of Jerry Quarry, and few can lay claim to that, and to young Jimmy Young in Honolulu, February past. Now, the Muhammad Ali entourage. Ali coming into the arena. Ron Lyle will be in red trunks tonight. There's Ali's career record, 46 out of 48, the two defeats. March 8, 1971, Joe Frazier, New York's Madison Square Garden. March 31, 1973, the San Diego Arena, decision to buy Kenny Norton. But Muhammad Ali in return bouts beat both men. And as you know, became only the second ever to regain the heavyweight championship of the world when he did away last October with George Foreman in the eighth round in Kinshasa, Zaire, Central Africa. Ali coming down toward the ring. 
in Ali's corner as always. His trainer, Angelo Dundee. Hi, Angie. Gene Kilroy, part of the Ali Revenue. Louis Soria will be there, and so will Dr. Purdy Pacheco. But Ron Lyle will not be unattended in his corner. Chicky Ferraro. Now there is a Lyle contingent standing up with a Lyle banner in the arena, cheering for Ron Lyle, much in the manner of the New York Mets fans at the big Shea with their Let's Go Mets routine. Chicky Ferraro will be handling Ron Lyle together with an old friend. Now Ali gets into the ring. The crowd's excitement and anticipation heightens this is the scene set for Ali's fifth bout ever here at the Las Vegas Convention Center. As Ali gets ready, lying in his corner against the ropes, we'll be back for the fight in a moment. Back live at the Las Vegas Convention Center, the heavyweight title fight about to come up. We're using our overhead shot again, a reminder, as circumstances warrant, and if the shot proves to be revealing, we will be using it from time to time during the bout. There's the graphic. Each man, 33 years of age. Lyle lost a lot of years. Ladies Ali gentlemen, lost three and a half years for reasons that have been gone into over and over again. Ali, five and a half pounds heavy. Ali has a four-inch breech edge. The ring is a 20-foot ring. There's plenty of room to move around. Ali, right above me now. Rupa dope he is saying to me as he goes into his act. Look up, look up, the rope dope, dope and the mirage. The mirage and the rope dope you watch careful. Well, I don't know if you can hear that on a hand mic. We just... Completely wear him out. Well, he's already talking to the crowd. Another evidence of his confidence. In the meanwhile, Lyle is not unconfident. And I would like to call attention to the person now attending to Ron Lyle. His name, Bobby Lewis. One of the finest men I've ever met in boxing. He coached the United States Olympic boxing team in the 20th Olympiad in Munich, West Germany in 1972. Look at Ron Lyle, leering, grinning at Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali is now gloved. His robe is opened. Dr. Ferdy Pacheco and Angie Dundee and Louis Soria, the principal men around. And the chant for Lyle goes up again and the uplifting and display of the Lyle banner. A lot of people here from Denver. In Denver, years ago, before he lost to Quarry, they thought Lyle would someday be the heavyweight champion of the world. He is an overwhelming underdog. He is not to be overrated as a fighter, but as a puncher and gut. Okay, Chuck Hall has just introduced Ron Lyle. Now Ali. Weighing 224 and one half pounds, the heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. goes he produces excitement and almost inevitably controversy what a career Ali has had again we're coming to you live in prime time from the Las Vegas Convention Center the heavyweight championship of the world at stake remember how it was that night in 64 February 25th in Miami when Liston did not get off the stool for the seventh round, Ali became the champion. He was Cassius Clay then, but faced the media people the next day and said, my name is Muhammad Ali, and so it was. Then, the extraordinary affair, May 25th, 65, in Lewiston, Maine. The invisible punch, the late Jimmy Cannon said he saw it, it couldn't have crushed a great. The befuddled referee, Walcott. And finally, the bout over in the first round. It's been one controversy after another. Finally, being deprived of his title and stripped of his right to fight, only to be vindicated after three and a half years of enforced idleness by the Supreme Court of the United States. Now, the bell for round one. Ali going right out toward Lyle, the two men in the middle of the ring. I will not try to kill him, Lyle said in our pre-fight talk. Nor will I wear myself out if he lies against the ropes. Ali covering up. So far, Ali has.
hasn't thrown any punch. But you don't see Lyle throwing too much leather either. There is the rope of dope, but you don't see Lyle wasting himself. Instead, he backed off. This is Lyle's fight plan in terms of the so-called rope of dope. Again, there is no attempt here to build Lyle into a great fight. His principal victories have been over the likes of Jimmy Ellis and Oscar Bonavina, Louis Pyrus, Buster Mathis. He is slow of foot. He is really slow of arms, but when he hits, he has knockout power in either hand, especially the left hook. Lyle told me, if you'll remember in the interview I did with him earlier today, this is what he was going to do. Ali is a defensive fighter, he said, and he wasn't going to use himself up against Remember what Ali said. He might win three of the first five rounds, but he's got to go by the eighth. Well, we'll see. Only once was Ali heavier than he weighed in today at 224 and a half. He weighed in at 227 for a lackluster effort against Mac Foster in Tokyo, Japan. Remember scoring on the five-point must system. Three judges score, the referee has no voice in the scoring, and the referee is Ferd Hernandez. The scorers, the judges, Johnny Mack, Bill Kipp, and Art Lurie. Mandatory eight count, no saving by the bell, not even after the 15th round if it goes the schedule 15. You see, Ali has done nothing in the first round. And Lyle, little more. Seems to be a little bit of blood out of Ali's nostril. Just underway, and there was blood out of Ali's right nostril, drawn in the first round, which had to be given to Lyle because Ali did nothing but cover up. So far... The highly touted rope of dope has not been in evidence because Ali, when he goes back to the ropes, finds that Lyle is not pursuing. But Lyle told us all about that in our interview earlier today. Still, Ali is a great one at devising strategy on the spur of the moment. Now Ali's corner is yelling, stick him, champ. Now Ali is in the corner with the rope of dope tactic. Lyle is just leaning against him, not punching away as George Foreman tried to when George used himself up. Don't forget Ali said that he'd do away with Lyle between 235 and 243 of the eighth round. So far, Muhammad's fighting his time, but Lyle isn't using up any energy either. got a mic on Angie Dundee, Ali's trainer, and between rounds, this will not be cutting away, you will hear what Dundee tells his fighter, the champ. Oh, a quick right by Ali, that was the first decent punch he's gotten off tonight. Ali with a right lead. Posture for Ali. He hasn't danced at all tonight. The left foot in front of the right foot. Whole new kind of fight for Ali thus far. You have to wonder whether or not he's clowning. It was a strange fight that day in San Diego against Kenny Norton, too. When he got the broken jaw. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is second round action. I'll lay in the white trunks, of course. Probably the most visible and recognized figure in the world. Why, well, he is clowning. He is openly clowning now. He laughed and half steered at Lyle. Time is running out in the second round. Isn't that an odd posture to see Ali in? The bell for the end of the second round, and we go to Ali's corner. The bell for the end of the second round, and we go to Ali's corner. working on Ali on that right nostril, although no blood came out of it in the second round. It was hard to pick up that which he was saying to Ali. Let's see if I can get a word from Ferdy Pacheco. Ferdy, the champ seems to be clowning. No, that's his new style of rope a doping. He's, uh, I he's, haven't he's... seen him rope a dope. Well, because the other guy won't go for it. He's got Chicky Ferrara in his corner. It's too smart to go for that falling in. All into right, the ropes. then what will Ali do in well, your he's opinion? He's been him with, with stinging him with straight rights. He's got to open and con the guy into coming after him. Okay. When he stings him, he'll come. Right. Ferdy Pacheco, Ali's personal position at ringside as always. And action in round three begins. So Lyle, by Pacheco's own admission, has been successful in not falling for the, quote, rope dope unquote. <laughs> Ali is talking to Lyle, taunting him. You see the mouth open, the half stare across his lips. <laughs> wondered about Lyle's concentration and his preparation for this fight. We have openly talked about, as you know, if you've been with us from the top of the program, the sordid nature of his background, the jail term and all the rest. Now he faces new felony charges with a hearing coming up on May 20th. His wife having alleged that he fired a pistol at her. Fortunately missed. But that's the allegation, and of course the hearing will take place under due process on the 20th of May. But you wonder how a man can concentrate in preparing for an opponent like Ali with that kind of thing hanging over his head. Oh, a good quick left and right by Ali, his best close of the night. Lyle trying to fight back, coming in with a right. No question, Lyle has no fear of this man. Live to your homes from the Las Vegas Convention Center. Ali defending against Ron Lyle, the heavyweight crown. Ali has been talking to him steadily from the start of the fight. Lyle's got to be careful of that straight right. Lyle got a pretty good right in himself. Ali has to feel Lyle's punches. What a contrast from the Foreman bout, where Foreman used himself up unwisely, unwisely, needlessly. Lyle is not using himself up at all. And he got away from that quick flurry, landed a good left to the chest. Not strong, but it, it connected. Third round is running down. Be back in a moment. All right, round four action just underway. Live from the Las Vegas Convention Center, Ali taunting with the crowd between the rounds. And Angelo Dundee telling him, I don't understand why, this guy's ready to go. You're ready to nail him. So far, there's been no evidence of that. Lyle is now using his left, not getting through, but 
jabbing steadily. Ali is still covering up the fists in front of the face. Remember, Ali got a bloodied right nostril in the first round. No real damage, but it was bloodied. That's been stopped ever since. No more blood. Dr. Ferdy Pacheco told us earlier, Chicky Ferrara in Lyle's corner is too small. Chicky's been in the business 40 years and more. And he's the one who's prepared Lyle in terms of tactics for this fight against Ali. As for Ali, there's been no foot movement. None of the old circling steadily to the left. None of the quickness of the left jab. Just that strange posture, the cover-up, mainly in the middle of the ring. Very little rope activity tonight because of Lyle's tactics. Drew Bundini, the irrepressible noisemaker in Ali's gonna just said, champ, you've got to stick sometime, meaning use that left. 24 and a half Ali is. You wonder how much stamina he's going to have at that weight. He was grossly out of shape for Wetner at 223 by his own admission. Crowd sitting here, waiting for Ali to erupt. They sat that way once in the first Dalton fight. So far, this fight in plain terms is an exercise in dulls. Nothing happening, only tactics. And Ali has been doing virtually nothing. Fourth round action about to close down. We'll be back in the round ends in a moment. Round five action. So far a nothing fight. A strange Ali. Posturing. Unable to use the ropes because Lyle won't go into him against the ropes. Lyle to the right. Ali knows this man has power. Look at him. Moving away. You never really know what Ali is thinking. But I suspect that deep within him there's a growing concern. Now he's beginning to circle in the old Ali now because he's found out he can't use the ropes. The ropes are a beautiful thing, Ali said, after the foreman fight, but not if your opponent won't let you get away with using them. This is the way to fight Ron Lyle with movement to run it slow sticking as Ali just did with the left. Now how long Ali in his present physical shape can move remains to be seen. But for the first time in this fight, he's on his toes. He's dancing in the old style. Not as swiftly, not as smoothly, not as rhythmically. But there is the movement, mainly to the left. Occasionally as there, back to the right. And then the quick jab. thus far, though it's registered no damage. <laughs> Ali left himself open when he missed, but he... Lyle could not score. He did not hit him. Lyle is... Unafraid, looks strong. That left is getting in, though. Left again. This is Ali's best round by far tonight. Now, Ali against the ropes. A right by Lyle got into him. He felt it. Round five. The 
the first time tonight Ali has produced any reaction from the fans. Any excitement at all. Although the crowd yelled, Lyle's right, only glance. We'll be breaking after this round for a commercial and then back in a moment. Sixth round action, quickly, Ali moving again, a little evidence of the shuffle. Ali moved in the fifth round, probably won the round, scored with the left and once with a right lead, but couldn't really put any combinations together to do real damage. Lyle is not going after him. As Lyle told us, he's not out to kill him. He thinks he can last with him and in the long run win. One has to wonder if indeed Ali can keep dancing as he is now. And in the meantime, Ali must establish that he can hurt Lyle. He must put combinations together. He hasn't been able to do it yet. Both men are 33. They're not kids anymore. Ali's a man who's never been the fighter that he was before he had the best three and a half years of his life taken away from him. He's been always an extraordinary athlete, though, and had what was necessary to come back and to recapture the crown. Up to this point, the hero of this fight might well be construed to be Chicky Ferrara in Lyle's corner. Because Lyle is fighting a very smart fight. And you've got to believe that the fight plan is Chicky Ferrara. Dundee is saying, stay close to him, to Muhammad Ali. Now Ali's in the corner, but you don't see Lyle flailing from Lyle as you did from Foreman. Ali, Ali actually pulled Lyle into him against the ropes, had his hands behind his neck. Tell you this, Ali must not expose himself to that Lyle left hook. In Ali's career, he's been vulnerable to the left hook. Henry Cooper decked him with the left hook the first time they met. Joe Frazier decked him with a left hook. So did Sonny, the late Sonny Banks. This is sixth round action. Ali in the white trunks, Lyle in the red. It has been a dull, disappointing fight. Disappointing in the sense that Ali has shown little, if any, but a smart tactical fight by Ron Lyle thus far under the guidance and ministrations of handler, trainer, Chippy Farrar. As the sixth round wears down, once again, Colby will break for a commercial and be back in a moment. Again, we're live at Ringside at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Howard Cosell, along with Frank Gifford, reporting action underway in the seventh round. Both of these men told us how they were going to fight this fight in interviews done earlier today, which hopefully all of you now with us saw. Lyle has stuck to his strategy perfectly as he detailed it to us. Ali has not been able to stick to his. He's not been able to use the rope. That rope-a-dope thing is now just a figment of memory because Lyle will not go in and throw, use himself up when Ali is against the ropes. And so the fight has been a tactical fight, which to many of you has probably seemed largely disappointing. I suppose in a purest boxing sense, it's an interesting fight. Ali is now covering up as Lyle goes after. Lyle has to be gaining in confidence, it seems to me. of this round for our stations along the line. This is an alert. We'll be pausing for station identification. There's only one outside chance that Ali, and I think this would really be stretching things, has been holding back for the predicted round date. But I think that would be stretching reason a great deal. I think Ali is concerned now about this fight.
dancing this round, Trolley. He danced in the fifth, he danced in the sixth. But not this round. Seventh round action, and we are within the last minute of the seventh round. Lyle, it seems to me, the aggressor in the fight. Lyle got in a good right to Ali's head then, with Ali in his rope-a-dope position. Lyle, Lyle measuring him, trying to get into it. Let me tell you, you feel Lyle when he leans against your body because he's 219 pounds. All right, we'll be back with more of the Muhammad Ali Ron Lyle World Heavyweight Championship fight. Now let's pause for this message from our local school. Gun action in round eight when we had to break so our local stations could identify themselves. Ali hurt Ron Lyle with a right. Now this is eighth round action. And this is the round Ali predicted he would do away with Lyle in. He's got a lot to have to do in a hurry, I'll tell you that. He said between 235 and 243 or thereabouts in this round. Now he's opening up. He's trying to. Trying to get it live. Lyle is a powerful man, can take a punch. When Jerry Quarry beat him, he hit him with everything he had, and Quarry could punch, I'll say that. And he said, I got tired of looking at the guy still coming at me. Ali is scoring much better, though, in this round. directly above us in his own corner. We're going to run this clock the whole round because of the prediction. Ali got to Lyle in. Ali got to him again with the right when Lyle was off balance. Ali is... an amazing thing to look at these two men now in the eighth round physically. We're in the countdown of the round. Ali's legs are not even perspiring. Lyle's up full of sweat. Lyle's whole body full of sweat. Ali's up a body sweating, but with nothing like the profusion of Lyle's. Ali has one weapon that Lyle, that Lyle does not seem to be able to stop, and that's the right lead. Remember in boxing, from most positions, the right lead is a dangerous punch. It takes longer to reach the adversary than the left, which is closer to the opponent's body. But he is not going to knock Ron Lyle out. And the crowd knows it. They're reacting. A big round for Muhammad Ali, no question about it. We're going to have to break for a commercial after this round, and we'll be back in a moment. Big round for Ali. Round nine live. We're going to have to break for a commercial after this round, and we'll be back in a moment. Big round for Ali. Round nine live from the Las Vegas Convention Center. The eighth, a big round for Ali. He wanted to make his prediction stick. It's shown little during the prior rounds, though the fight is, of course, close because Lyle has done little. Ali went after Lyle. He heard him in the eighth round. Ali tried to suck a Lyle into the ropes. Lyle wouldn't do it. Went back to mid-ring, waved to Ali to come at him. Ali didn't necessarily like it. You saw him talking 
with the crowd in effect. The prediction by the board. It's Ali moving now. What Ali did establish in the last round was that he could hit Lyle, hit him often. It was the first time he put combinations together. He heard him. Look at this. That's exciting, isn't it? As we told you in the early going, you'll not see much movement from Lyle. He is slow foot. He is ponderous. But Ali himself looks like he expended a lot of energy in the last round. He looks tired. Pretty Pacheco does not look especially happy standing next to me. He just shook his head as I said it in agreement. He's not happy. Lyle is a big, powerful man, if nothing else. And you can get tired with a man like this leaning against you all night, trying to work you over. After this round, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Angelo Dundee. I've got a couple of questions for him. That was a quick flurry by Ali. Otherwise, the round has been relatively devoid of action. a left in. We're approaching the end of round nine. After a big eighth round, Ali either rested or something in the ninth because he didn't do much. Let's see what we can get Let's see what we can get from Angelo Dundee as he begins to work over Muhammad. Angie, your comment on the course of the fight thus far. Well, so far he's busy sponging down his fighter, and that's certainly understandable. Angie? Angie continuing to work on the fighter. The mouthpiece going back in. Ali directly above us. We'll get him, hopefully, as soon as... Yes, he's coming back through the ropes now. I want a quick capsule impression of the fight thus far from Angelo Dundee, one of the veteran and very wise men of boxing. Apparently, we're not going to get him. The round's going to start, so I'll try to talk to him during the round. All right, the bell for round 10. The action begins. And maybe now we can talk to Angelo Dundee. Angie, give us your capsule impression of the fight thus far, and are you worried about your fighter? No, I'm not concerned about my fighter. My fighter's going to start handling him now. This guy, Lyle, fought a very smart fight early. He wouldn't wear himself out, so he's trying to cat and mouse game. But it boils down to one thing. Muhammad's the champion. He's the challenge. you got to go and get the title, so he's not doing that. Are you telling me that you consider Ali ahead on points at this point? Well, if he's not ahead, I'm blind. Okay, Angelo Dundee as we pick up with the action in round 10. Angie, of course, vouchsafed what we said earlier, that this was a tactical fight, shrewdly constructed by Chicky Ferrara. And Ron Lyle's gone. Ron has been following instructions. Oh, a right got into Ali. The side of Ali's head then. Las Vegas Convention Center. 
Ali against Lyle. An exercise in ring tactics. And who knows, maybe Angie is right. It's got to be called a close fight. And Lyle, for most rounds, was the aggressor. Though Ali did dance in the fifth and sixth. Score with effectiveness and had a big round in the eighth. No knockdowns, of course. I must say, although Ali continues to talk to Lyle, he's talking to him right now. He is doing nothing. And he seems tired, too. At 224 and a half, he's still talking to Lyle. Lyle has paid no attention to him. He has not been able to beat Lyle. Lyle has not lost his composure. of an uneventful 10th round with looking at Ron Lyle over in his corner. He's being sponged off by Chicky Ferrara who would seem to be the story of the fight from Lyle's point of view thus far. Incidentally, right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Tomorrow, Tomorrow, we'll be bringing you at 3.30 Eastern Time until 5, live, the Allen King Tennis Classic. And again on Sunday, that will, of course, be from... <laughs> Art Connie is waving to us. I'm with Allen King himself. And he'll be on along with me and Richard Poncho Gonzalez as we bring you the Allen King Tennis Classic live. How are you scoring this fight? Well, I've got to think of it as well, maybe a head on round. You well, think Lyle's a head on rounds, although I think Allie's been doing some damage in those middle rounds. That's six, seven, and eight. Okay, Allen King, the Allen King Tennis Classic, tomorrow, 3.30 Eastern Time. Live from Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. By the way, Allen King doesn't give you an uninformed opinion. He was a fighter. Cut out of boys' high school in Brooklyn. Hey, he hurt Lyle! Ali cut to Lyle! Lyle is in trouble! He hurt him with a left. Lyle went back against the ropes. He's desperately trying to cover up. Ali won't expend himself while Lyle's against the ropes. But Ali smells blood. 11th round action. And Ali in command. Lyle's eyes are glassy. He's staggering. This time Lyle is ready to go. Look at that. Muhammad Ali. This is Muhammad Ali. The way he can be even at 33. Suddenly from nowhere. The left cut to Lyle him back against the ropes. Ali in total command. Being separated now. The fight is stopped by referee Bird Hernandez. Lyle is objected, but he is rubbery leg. Chicky Ferrara goes right after the referee. Why stop it? Why stop it? But it's a TKO. Muhammad Ali successfully in the 11th round defense his heavyweight championship of the world. It came out of nowhere. Now he's facing the crowd, talking to them. I'll be going up into the ring to talk with the champion, and we'll be back for that conversation in just one moment. With Muhammad Ali. Muhammad, come in. Look right into that camera. What were you doing for 10 rounds? Except for maybe only the eight. First of all, I want to say all praises to the Allah. Thank Almighty God Allah. And thanks to our new leader and teacher, the Honorable Wallace E. Muhammad. I want to say hello to him. Also to all my friends out there and fans. Tell the people I'll be in Detroit, Michigan for Shaw College Boxing Exhibition very soon. All right, that's first of all. You showed some foot movement in the fifth and sixth. The first four rounds, you did little, if anything. You couldn't work your rope a dope. Chicky Ferrara prepared Lyle for a tactical fight. The eighth round was a big round, and then suddenly you did away with him in the 11th. And that wasn't your plan. You predicted an eighth round knockout. 
Just had him go on that eight. Okay. You know, All right, you're looking at okay. that. Uh, Call it as you see. Lyle's a scientific fighter. He's a good fighter. He's never been stopped. Uh, I didn't want to burn out my energy. I don't think the people realize it. Milan is, Lyle is exhausted. He's him doing most of the work. This took his toll. Me just standing there, no running, no dancing. Stand right there. That one right hand did there first left and then the right hand. Yeah, first right hand. All night long, by the way, the right lead did work. Lyle is open right now, for the right lead. You see him doing my style, man. That style is good, but nobody can do it because I'm a little fast. He's a good fighter. Team deep enough from him, but I had him going, and that was all of it. It was only time. No heavyweight can punch all of those rounds and follow me and not be hurt. I'm going to tell the referee to come in here and stop because I don't think it's right. Keep beating the man once you know you got him. It should have been stopped earlier. Chicky Ferrara obviously didn't think the fight should be stopped. Neither did Lyle for that matter. Well, Lyle would have been hurt. I was hitting him too flush, hitting him too solid. From here, I'm going to Kota Kenobalu, Sabwe, East Malaysia. We're fighting we no the heavyweight champion of Europe, Joe Bugner. That's seven more weeks from now. I'm staying pretty active, so this is why I'm pacing myself. Okay, champ. Bugner and yeah, June, when, when Frazier and Will we Foreman get a shot? All of them are right in line for this year. Uh, it'll be a Shaw College, I want to say. Uh, Miss, Miss Murphy, the uh, college professor there, and uh, Miss Lillian Smith, tell them all I'll be there soon in Detroit. The people there will see me live. Okay, champ. Hello. I'm going to try to get Ron Lyle if I can. I'm Thank sure you. he'll have a different view of the stopping of the fight. And while we say goodbye to the still heavyweight champion of the world, we'll talk with Lyle in just a moment. We're back with the defeated challenger, Ron Lyle. First of all, Ron, it was clear you didn't think the fight should be stopped. Sure didn't, I was, but, you know, I knew it was something was going to happen because I was winning every round. He couldn't have won that if he'd have, you know, if it had went 15, he'd have been out of it clean, you know. Well, then what happened in the 11th? He did have your rubbery leg, glassy uh, eye. Chicky told me just... To, to 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 jab and give him the round. I was winning every round, man. You know. You agree with him, Chicky? What's that? I, I don't agree. I don't agree with the referee. He acted like it was a four-round fight. This is a world championship. And you don't think it should have been stopped? No, sir. He come back and he's standing up ever since talking. Lyle followed your instructions from the beginning, didn't he? Tactically. It, well, yes, yes, mostly yes. Uh huh. Never letting him use himself up against no, the no, ropes. No, no, He kept following, moving back. Did you have Lyle ahead at uh, the point where the fight was well, stopped? let me ask you, how many rounds you give the other guy? I thought it was a very close fight, and I had a slight close edge fight. for Ron. Ron. Ron had a big lead, not a little. It's possible. Yes. That's what he had it, he had it. The scoring, the scoring they, of a fight is always subjective. What do you mean that's why they put on well, the because, sack? Because they had no chance of winning. And you think then that uh, well, the... I don't know what happened, but it wasn't it wasn't kosher. Is that a way you stop a world's championship fight? All right, like Chick fight. Chicky Ferrara with an accusation. Ron, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know, I know. Good luck to you. I know the second stack before I got here. I was... Okay, it wasn't kosher, said Chicky Ferrara, as he registers his indignation. And Ron Lyle just said, I know the circumstances under how I got here.